You're watching the Bethel College Football Show. It's jumped by Trey Palmer. He's going to take it for a pick six. Touchdown, Bethel. He catches it in midfield. Braden Francis from 91 yards from Zach Esau. Now here's your host, Dan Page, with football coach Terry Harrison. Hello and welcome to the Thresher Football Show. I'm Dan Page alongside head coach of the Bethel College Threshers, Terry Harrison. The Thresher is now 2-1 and one on the season after a loss last Saturday to Kansas Wesley in 31-24. The final score there, the Threshers fall to number 18 nationally while the Coyotes go up to number 12. But uh, it's been, it was a really competitive football game. The Threshers just came a little bit short coach. It was a strong first half, but then that second... Half, the second half, Kansas Wesleyan again, like they did last spring, they they turned up the defense a little bit. Yeah, no, I thought I thought they did a great job. You know, I know in, in our in our radio show when we're previewing the game, we talked about how big of a challenge this was for our program. You know, they're one of the better teams in the country and certainly in our conference. And so, you know, definitely, it's always frustrating and disappointing to lose that game. Um, but at the same time, you know, if, if everything we say about our program is true, you know, what you have to do is like, man, what an opportunity for our guys, um, you know, to kind of face failure as a group and us as coaches and players together um, and use that, um, you know, to really test what our program's about. And if our purpose is much higher than winning and our purpose is, is teaching these guys to be great young men and helping them prepare them for life after football, man, what, what a great opportunity to learn how to deal with adversity. And so, you know, that's what we've done this week. And I'm, and I'm very proud that, Man, how our kids handle themselves after the game, you know, and, and it's really hard because it's embarrassing. And I mean, parents are the same way, right? Parents, fans, uh, supporters, and coaches, you know, it's not fun to lose. It can cause anger. It can cause disappointment. It can cause embarrassment even. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things we learn here is how to handle that. And I think we talked about it in our group, you know, in our family group after the game. But, you know, when that happens, you just have to, you know, you have to, as a man, you have to, you have to stand tall, you have to hold your, hold your chin up, and you have to just kind of, a, you know, look at it as a learning experience. And I think our kids did a great job of that you know, losing with, you know, you know, as respectfully as possible. And, and it's hard because when you're in a big game, people celebrate big time, you know, oh, and yeah. you want to be, a, we want to be a program that when, if you are, if you ever drop a game and we certainly don't want to, right, we practice all this time for a reason, but if you do, it's, it's, it's disappointing and it's embarrassing, but it's also a huge compliment when it's considered an upset. And so um, that's because we've placed ourselves in that program, you know, and if you think back to 2018, that just was not, you know, it was not the case, you know, and so we're in a spot where that's kind of where we're at now. Um, and while it's frustrating and it's disappointing and we all have a high standard here, man, it is a, it's a huge compliment when you drop a game and it's considered an upset. And then the flip side of that, not only is it a compliment to the, our program, what a huge opportunity to learn from disappointment and frustration. And, um, and I know our kids have done a great job of that, you know, with it being Wednesday now, um, how we've handled practice, how we handled our Monday. Just, uh, you know, so proud of our kids. And it certainly is not a lack of effort or a lack of commitment to our program. We just, uh, you know, we fell short. And, um, you know, while it's, fr it's frustrating and disappointing, I, mean, I just can't wait to watch our guys bounce back. And, um, you know, certainly, um, they've done that already, so I'm excited to watch them on, watch them on our game against Ottawa. Absolutely. The uh, Thrushers will play the Ottawa Braves coming up this Saturday, and it should be a good game for the Thrushers to bounce back as they fall to Kansas Wesleyan by 31-24, to that score. And uh, in that game, Coach Chance Curry, your leading rusher, he breaks off a run of 78 yards. Cameron Harrison touchdown from 72 yards in the first half, and then you get Another big play on a pick six. Trey Palmer takes it back 65 yards. There in the first half, it was 
big place Bethel at the time. <laughs> yeah, no, it really was, man. That chance, that run that Chance had was absolutely amazing. Um, Trey, I didn't get to see it because I was working with the O-line, but obviously heard the crowd go crazy and then watch him score his touchdown. So that was, uh, you know, those are that we, we seem to say his name every week, right? <laughs> um, and then obviously I thought our, our by committee, Cam, ripped off a really big run. Our offensive line played really well the first half. I felt like our defense did an awesome job. They, they have some good players, you know, and so we had – we had so many great things happening. Probably when you look back at this game from a coaching lens, you know, as a staff, we talked about it. We had big plays. We played great defense, but it was almost the complimentary football is what, yeah. um, what wasn't happening. So it was like when our defense was getting stops, we were turning the ball over. And when we were scoring, we were letting them move the ball. And it just, you know, our, the style of play in the complimentary football just wasn't happening. And so, you know, it's, uh, that's certainly frustrating. But, you know, so many good things happened in the first half. And, you know, so many guys, I mean, did such a great job. I felt like our offensive line was very physical the first half. We were moving the ball and making those big plays happen. Perimeter blocking was really good. Um, and then defense applying pressure. You know, they got some shots on that QB, and it looked yeah. like maybe he wasn't going to, you know, be able to finish the game. You know, he laid on the field a couple times there. But, uh, man, I just felt like that first half was really awesome. Did a great job, and then you know when it, you know then when it flips and we don't play complimentary football, we got in this situation where you know maybe we put the game away if we punch one in after a couple of defensive turnovers. I mean, we just weren't able to do that, unfortunately. But man, what a great first half! And like you mentioned, Chance, I felt like he's playing the best football he's played in his career here. Yeah. And so you know, if that's the case, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be really hard to beat us on any given night. And um, you know, certainly we made it really hard on Kansas Wesson, which we could have finished it. But uh, man, like you mentioned, those guys played played really really well. Back-to-back yeah, -back games where he just broke a huge run there on the first drive for you guys, and you end up scoring 21 points in the first half. It's 21 to 17. Then you come out in the se the second half in the third quarter. What I thought what was really good at the beginning of the third quarter is you guys get a couple stops on them. Um, Avery had two sacks in a row on back-to-back -back plays. That was huge on a third down situation as well. And then, uh, you know, you just kind of had a feeling that maybe things will start really going for your way in the second half as well. And then, you know, it, it just kind of, it just kind of got quiet. Yeah, yeah, you know, we just, we just didn't make it happen, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, some, uh, in the middle of a game, it's kind of hard to see it, but when you go back and watch the film, just untimely errors and those drives where, like we talked about this idea of complimentary football, we're up 21-10, defense is getting stops, and man, it just felt like if you can go punch it in, you know, maybe the tide of that game changes, and, you know, we just weren't able to do that, and, you know, it's just untimely errors on at different positions. It was not unique to one position. It was certainly multiple, and you know, as coaches, we've got to eat that and be like, hey, that's on us, right, to, to fix that and make sure our, our kids are ready to play their best in that moment. And so, you know, certainly wasn't a lack of effort, lack of preparation. Man, it just for whatever reason, you know, it didn't happen. And so it, it can be very frustrating and disappointing, but, you know, so proud of, man, the prep our guys put in, our coaches and our players to, to be in that opportunity to, to have a shot to do that. And so, man, while we're so disappointed it didn't happen, I'm so proud of our guys. And, and like I said, you know, we wish it would have been differently, but, you know, we, we're still in a position where we're, all of our goals are attainable. And, um, man, just wish we could have, you know, like, like a lot of coaches, you know, you, we wish you could have a half back. Unfortunately, you know, life doesn't work that way. A lot of us have decisions we wish you could have back in our life. And, you know, in the end, we'll be defined by how we react to that. And I know our guys, you know, just based on what we've seen today and, the, you know, after that game, man, so proud of our guys. and know that, man, we do, we do have a group of special kids. And, you know, our purpose is so much higher than winning. You know, it's also much higher than losing. And so while it can hurt, and proud of those guys. Wish we could have pulled it off, pulled it off everybody in the second half. But um, you know, we'll we'll continue to get better and learn from it for sure. Absolutely. And of course, I mean, you don't definitely have those bright spots to mention. Chance 147 yards is what he is, ends up with on Saturday. 89 yards from Cam Harrison. Then he flipped over to the other side of the ball. Seabolt doing what he does. 13 tackles. Uh, Cade Miller had a really good pick for you guys in that second half. I mean, you had guys you know stepping up and doing those type of things and. It was important to the game at the time because it was so close. And, uh, I mean, you guys were just trading and trading. I mean, if you had more time, you know, who knows how the game would have ended there. Absolutely. But uh, I know, uh, you know, just thinking about this, Coach, you know, they, 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 saw, they brought some different type of tight formations against you guys that maybe they saw that friends did or something like that or somebody else like that. But then they go to the no huddle, and mm -hmm. it seemed like it really made things difficult. I know your team has seen the no huddle before, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I, going forward, you got to know that opponents are going to be <laughs> looking at that a lot, right? Yeah, well, I hope they do. You know, I hope <laughs> they do. So, I, yeah, that's um, – yeah, they just – you know, they, they – 
I think they threw for ended up throwing for 400 yards, and it didn't feel like they did in the game. It felt like you know that that wasn't the case. But yeah, they they were doing some little spot routes in there, and that's something that we work on. And you know, the game was so loud and on the field, you know, our, our sideline was going crazy and investing in each other. And so you know, we might, might have some miscommunication there, but again. Uh, you know, it was it was it was something we practiced. Um, you know, we were prepared for that. We prepare for that every week um, because a lot, so many teams are doing that sort of stuff, and they just, you know, they 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 have a lot of good receivers, um, and they were able to take advantage of some matchups we felt like that they really liked, and um, you know, we we just weren't able to get pressure there at the end. And you know, when you're, it's one thing to have five receivers, but you're only blocking with five too. And so, you know, for us, we want to make sure we're landing pressures in those scenarios. And we just, you know, we weren't able to do it. They, they, those kids did a good job. They have an older group just like us. You know, every team came back, and so that moment wasn't too big for them. You know, and quite honestly, I don't feel like it was too big for our kids. We even marched it down and gave ourselves a shot at the end there. Yeah. Um, so it was just a, it was a really good football t game against two top twenty football teams. Um, who you know have a who have a shot to be playoff teams depending on how we both finish, um, and it was just one we came up short on. And so you know, like I said, frustrating. I don't I don't believe it was a certain formation that made it happen. It was just you know, like always, it comes down to you know small. You know, football such a crazy game because it comes mm -hmm. down to just little bitty differences and things. And so you know, you got to tip your hat to a team like that who did a great job of taking advantage of um, you know opportunities they had. And man, as as much as it hurts to say, we just we weren't able to do that, and we have sure. to do a better job of that moving forward. Sure. And so you guys, you know, wrap up the weekend and everything, come back on Monday, you play a JV game against Kansas Wesleyan as well. And this was just a different environment than I think maybe some people were expecting because obviously not only do you have your guys that were on the sideline, you know, cheering on their team on Saturday on the field in this situation, you had guys, you know, serving as well. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I didn't get any, you know, kind of mopey vibes or anything from anybody, which was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the deal, right? How do you? That's the challenge when you lose a tough game. Is how do you handle that? And we tell our, we try to preach our kids, look, your life's not about you; it's about what you can do for others. And so, in the face of frustration and disappointment, hey, we've got an opportunity to serve these guys that have been, you know, for lack of better words, serving us at practice and on our sidelines. And so, man, our guys. It was the most fun, honestly. That that's as fun as I've ever had on a football field at Bethel since I've been here. Um, and not be, not just because we won sixty three to zero, which was fun, um, but but more than that, you know, our guys were chain crews, our guys were ball boys, our guys worked concessions, our guys were the announcers and the live stream, and they did all that stuff. Um, Logan sang the national anthem, which was really cool. Uh, they made that, you know, we ran the video board and, and our deals, we, we say make the big time where you're at. That's a staple of our program. And that's what we want to do. We want to provide a big time experience for those guys that just, you know, haven't had as much of that in their career as Bethel. And I thought, man, they did a great jo job of that. Our coaches coach extremely hard. I mean, we were coaching that thing like it was a national championship game. And, you know, we call ourselves the JV national champions <laughs> because we're undefeated in JV football since we've been here. And uh, we've won an out-of-conference game twice now. And then we're able to do this. So that was really cool. But man, just to watch our kids have fun. And it was, you know, even as a coach sometime when you're frustrated from a really tough loss, you know, and it's just like, it can leave you scrambling. And even though we know our purpose is so much higher than winning here, and you know, and all the things our program is about, it still hurts. I mean, it just does, right? We're all human and we all want to win from parents to coaches to kids. Um, but then to see that, you know, and coming back on a hard film session on Sunday, because, you know, we want to fix any flaws we might've had, yeah. but then to see our guys come back Monday and just totally snap out of that and handle adversity like we consider men what men how men, men should handle adversity mm -hmm. and man just to put that back in other people and play extremely hard i mean our guys were flying around smoking people on defense big plays on offense got to watch guys play and then you know more and just as importantly watching our guys serve Man, what a what an amazing event, and what a testament to our players, both the guys that got an opportunity to play, but then are also that we're serving. And um, you know, as honestly, and it sounds crazy, but you know, more proud than any award we've won, more proud than any ring we've gotten thus far. Um, that Monday was probably the proudest moment I've had as a coach, just because of how we handled that thing. And um, man, I don't I don't know that every program across the country could have done that. Yeah. And um, man, we looked to do that some more for our guys because it was a, it was just a, just a really great experience for sure. It just seems kind of like the vibe at this level is you know a lot of schools may not play JV because you know you lose a day of practice. But I feel like that moment that moment for you guys was like a mental practice kind of thing where you guys were gaining from it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it sounds like even from what you've said 
that was definitely the case. So that was that was really fun to watch. I mean, you guys had like Taj Munnings, he kicked extra points, yep. scored touchdowns. <laughs> Justin Foster, uh, DJ Sears played well. I, I I'm gonna name I'm gonna miss a bunch of guys, but guys that we don't even talk about usually, mm -hmm. but are great guys. Like yeah. you know, on the sideline, they're they're always instilling you know that kind of vibe, that motivation from the sideline, and so it was really cool to see that. Yeah, so many guys. You know, you could list them all, but all these guys that are waiting in the wings to be the next group, right? That is mm -hmm. compete, hopefully competing for conference championships and competing for national championships. Those guys. Uh, man, did a phenomenal job. You know, Brian Parker got a sack, and it's his first time playing in quite a while. <laughs> man, that was really cool. Um, Clay Hatfield got a couple sacks. Uh, Roger Eckers got a pick. Uh, man, saw some pass breakups. Tristan Berger, AP, was making plays. It was just, yeah, like you said, you know, you, you always forget kids when you start trying to list everyone. But, man, just so awesome to see that offensive line got a bunch of great reps in. And so, you know, Isaac Enriquez had a catch who's been here and put on a bunch of time. Justin Foster, like you mentioned, just guys that – couldn't be more proud of those guys. I thought they did a great job. And, you know, my hope is, you know, you know, thanks to Tony Hoops, to you, to Colin for allowing us to make that a big time experience and providing a live stream service. I think it was a thousand views at the game yeah. in the middle of it. Right. And, <laughs> you know, and and thought our guys like, you know, the, the, the glaring one is Avery and Domo, who did the live stream broadcast. Yeah. Um, thought they did a, a, a professional job. So if you're a Kansas Wesleyan fan, they were able to watch their kids, you know, yeah. and, and if they're an out-of-state family or couldn't make it, they were able to watch it. And, you know, and, you know, while certainly I know we were getting excited for our guys, but I mean, I thought it was done just really well. And man, what a, what a great job. So thanks for everyone to make that happen because it, it certainly took a lot to get us going. And, um, man, our kids that served in the concession stands, it was just really cool. Proud of those guys. And, um, you know, 63 to zero wins, pretty cool anyway, and now we move on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and you'll have a chance to do it again in the upcoming weeks. Uh, I believe a JV game against Sterling at home again, and then you have a road JV game, I think. I don't know the order, but Yeah, Octo Bethany. October 4th, Sterling at home, and it'll be another big time event, and then October 11th, we're at, at Bethany, so that's what okay. we have coming. Awesome. All right, well, that's going to do it for our first segment of the show, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the Threshers and the Ottawa University Braves and the conference landscape coming up here on the Thresher Football Show. Thresher fans, get ready for the 2021-2022 school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, windscreens at Thresher Stadium, improvements at Weedle Field and Ward Tennis Center, and new wall mats inside Thresher Gym. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history in a booster club that has grown 500% in the past five years, over four levels of membership plus a parent level. Join the Bethel College Booster Club today to help student athletes live out life-changing experiences. For more information, go to BethelKS.edu slash booster dash club today. Welcome back on the Thresher Football Show. Dan Page alongside with Terry Harrison, head coach of the Bethel College Threshers. The Threshers 2-1 and one on the season and in the conference standings, you guys sit down at number four right now. There's three unbeaten teams, Kansas Wesleyan, Avila, and Southwestern. And two of those play each other this week. Same time you guys kick off, Coach. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, good. that's good news. But still really early in the season. You guys get Ottawa, who comes in 0-3 uh, in the conference, but 1-3 overall. They've beaten, or they beat Oklahoma Panhandle State, lost to Southwestern, Avila, and McPherson in three consecutive weeks. Yeah, no, you know, what, the thing with Ottawa, they've always been really explosive on offense, you know, and... Um, you know, their coach has won a bunch of games in our conference, you know, in the past. And so, you know, it, it, you know, I'm assuming he hasn't forgotten how to coach and he has won a bunch of games, you know, here recently. They haven't been as relevant in the conference. But, you know, I know we were in our first ever game here at Bethel, that's who we played and they beat us pretty good. So they always get our full attention when we play them because we've seen that, you know, and uh, yeah, a dangerous team with some of the kids they have, especially especially at running back, really like their running backs. Um, so we're going to have to do a good job of, uh, you know, managing that, their run game. Um, felt like their offensive line does a really good job and, and, they're, and they're, they're able to kind of do some really good things there in the box. And so, you know, if we can do that and kind of limit their passing game, hopefully create some turnovers, which would be really nice. I think we were able to do that really well against them last year. Um, you know, that's going to be really good for us. But, yeah, they beat a beat, – have an out-of-conference win in that first week, which is, a, you know, a tip in the cap because not a lot of schools in our conference have went outside and won. Um, and then, obviously, they've lost – you know, they've lost three in our conference. But, you know, I certainly don't think that's uh, – that represents the talent they have on their roster. They have some really good players. So, you know, they've uh, – you know, like always, they've got our full attention, and we're going to have to do a really good job to, you know, hopefully have a shot to win this thing in the fourth quarter. 
obviously people can look at it in so many different ways. Obviously, you have a common opponent that you've each played, and McPherson being that, and I mean, there's so much that, um, you know, matchup-wise difference, it's so much differentiation between mm -hmm. you guys and them and those kind of circumstances. But, you know, people don't forget, Coach, what you did against Ottawa last year, putting up 78 points against them at home. And it was just kind of a high-scoring game in the first half, and then you guys just really just – its I don't know if it was endurance or what, but you guys went for the long haul in the second half. There. Yeah, no, I felt like our coaching staff last year, you know, did a really good job adjusting in the second half because it was so high scoring in the first half. And, um, you know, I think that that was kind of the difference in that game for sure. And, I, and, and if I remember correctly, we played a lot of football since then. Um, <laughs> turnovers were a really big deal in that game, and our yeah. defense played really well. I think Trey had a pick six. I can't remember if yep. that was the first or second half. But, you know, when that happens, you know, it, uh, it, it kind of makes it pretty frustrating for the other team. And uh, like I said, they, um, we've been in some dog fights with them. The first year they, you know, our first game ever was an ESPN three. I will never forget my first college football <laughs> game as a coach and they beat us pretty bad. Um, so, you know, that's something that doesn't go away, you know, when you're a competitor and you remember that. And then we were able to beat them two years ago at their place um, on a blocked PAT. And then last oh, year, yeah. obviously, you know, it kind of turned in our favor a little bit more, but no, they, um, they're, they're somebody that every year, you know, because we have so much respect for their program, we look forward to playing them every year. Um, and, and like I mentioned, we know how talented their kids are. So we always give it our best shot and we, we prepare like it's a like it's a national championship game. And, and that's no different this week. Yeah. And you talk about that game two years ago, you know, Landon Martin started that game for you guys and he, he left that game, <laughs> you know, it looked like he'd been punched out, you yeah. know, black eye and everything. <laughs> and but he scored the game winning touchdown for you guys. And then Josh Siebolt was in on the the blocked extra point that won it, yeah. and it was it was it was nuts. But I think that was huge for you guys at the time, and um, you know you still have those guys in the program, which is great. And so uh, you know they they know what it means to beat Ottawa, and you know like you said from the start there and, and to now. So uh, Ottawa is going to be a little bit different this year than they were last year. It seems like um, with some individuals and. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball from what we've seen. Yeah, yeah, they have the one linebacker back, I believe his name's Colby Lewis, if, if I remember right, but I think he's number 40. And he just plays with such a great motor. Reminds me a lot of, you know, Josh, in a way, just the way he plays, how hard he plays. Um, and so we're, we're gonna have to make sure we manage him. They have a good defensive lineman as well, um, who's caused some problems in the past, so he's gonna get our full attention. And, you know, offensively, man, really like their quarterback from last year. Um, I, I think their coach's son is the new quarterback, and so I think he's a freshman who's playing. And so, um, you know, depending on which one of those guys we get, we kind of, you know, we, we've been evaluating their film and trying to give, her, give it our best shot against those guys. But, no, they, um, man, they do some really good stuff. They always pose a challenge. Um, our kids have played, you know, our kids love playing Ottawa because we've been in some of those crazy games and on both sides of those. And so, man, it should be a great game. They have a, they have a nice facility, right? It's, yeah. a, it's a great place to watch a football game. Um, and a 1 p.m. kickoff is awesome because, you know, it's not going to be 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., um, you know, at the end of that thing. So should be a lot of fun. Really excited about it. They do have a good team. Like I said, I don't know if the 1-3 and three record necessarily reflects the talent on their team. It's just maybe, you know, things hadn't quite went their way. And so we want to make sure we give, our, give ourselves an opportunity to win that thing. Uh, the Threshers taking on the Ottawa University Braves. Like Coach said, it's at 1 o'clock kickoff. You can watch that on the KCAC Network and a lot of other games, which was great about it. It's all in one place now where fans can watch it, and uh, it's a really good move by the conference to go in that direction. And then you have, at the same time as you guys kick off, you have Abla and Southwestern, two unbeaten teams. And, uh, you know, last year was a really good game when, look, you know, you kind of looked around at the conference, and that one was a really good one. Both of those teams end up beating Kansas Wesleyan last year. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost like that round robin kind of thing with the top four schools right now. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, those that we've been kind of the top four teams in the conference for the last couple of years. And so, you know, those two playing each other is good, right? Because we're going to get to see how that shakes out. And then, um, you know, we're kind of in a spot where, you know, Avila was able to play really good football after, after a loss last year to to us and they were able to kind of come in the back door there and and be a conference champion just like just like we were and had an athlete outside shot at the playoffs and now that's kind of where we're sitting at where maybe we're not in the driver's seat but we're certainly positioned you know at being 18 um, as long as we continue playing really well and if we can you know compete in these games and, and win out we have a shot to you know be in that conversation because the goal is you know really top 14 top 16 um, is where you want to be when you get to that last week of the season when they start doing playoff matchups so you know if that's what if it's only looking at that that's certainly something but obviously for us man it's just about so much more than that it's about you know bouncing back from a tough loss giving it our best shot and 
you know, being to continue to be a program whose purpose is so much higher than playoffs, winnings and losing, you know, while certainly those are goals we have, um, mm -hmm. this weekend, like you mentioned, and some of the matchups across the conference should kind of, you know, start to shake out about how this thing, you know, could look in the finishing weeks. And so it's going to give us a good idea of, you know, where those two programs are at. I was, uh, you know, obviously, coming off your guys' loss, you have a chance to really get some momentum going, get some more wins under your belt before you run into, a, you know, a, a stretch where you play, you know, Avalon Southwestern back back-to-back -back kind of mm -hmm. thing so um, and again those two teams Avalon is now number 15 in the country they've won 11 straight football games since they lost to you guys here last year it, yeah. it's kind of crazy but and then Southwestern's number 22 so it's yeah. it's getting you know pretty competitive with those guys and then you know from there on out it's kind of a dog fight in the conference <laughs> yeah no that's exactly right and man what a you know we talked about it earlier and it doesn't change you know we should you know, we want, we want teams in our conference to be ranked high. That's good for us. It's good for the conference, and it allows us to get quality wins potentially, right? Or, you know, number one, they're going to be tough wins to get, right, because you have to play really well. But when you do get those wins, it does, you know, position whichever team in our conference comes out to get a higher seed in the playoffs where maybe you don't travel to Kentucky, right? You can host a game. And the flip side of that is getting that second team in. And so, you know, we're going to be in the conversation to potentially still be the conference champion, depending on how this plays out. We're also in a position to come in um, as a potential number two, depending on, you know, how this the rest of the stuff plays out. But, you know, more than that, the cool part is our kids, you know, our kids know that. And, and as a staff, we keep track of that stuff. But more importantly, you know, what an opportunity to learn from a tough loss now to get, get, to get better to allow us you know, to play these games and give ourselves an opportunity. So couldn't be more excited about that. Couldn't be more excited about the conference and the level of play in it. And, um, man, we know that all these games are getting us ready uh, for future wins and future playoff games and all that good stuff. And, um, man, I hope that's an opportunity this year. You know, but if not, certainly in the future, that's going to be something that, man, only pays off playing these great teams. Absolutely. Other games in the conference, Kansas Wesleyan is at Bethany and Kate up now up to number 12 in the country. Sterling is at Tabor. Both of those 7 o'clock kicks, 6 o'clock kick. And Leavenworth, as friends, is at St. Mary, but not the rest of the conference. Coach, Coach, we were talking about this a little bit off the air. Uh, you know, it's really important for you guys to get some fans out to the games because we have three home games left. You have you know Bethany and Avila, and I, I can't even remember the last one. I mean, yeah, it, it's I it's, it's, uh, it's Tabor. That's right. Yeah, how, do, how can I forget yeah. that one? Yeah. But obviously, you got Fall Fest coming up with the Bethany game. Uh, that's a, that's always huge, um, mm -hmm. and, but only three home games left. Fans better get out and watch yeah. you guys. <laughs> well, that's exactly right, you know, and the cool part is, you know, night games are way more fun at home than they are on the road, so that's cool, a couple of those night games, but, you know, I can tell you it was it was so fun Saturday because it, it was so loud when plays were happening. It was, uh, you know, it, it was just a great night, you know, with, with the amount of people at the game and the atmosphere and the environment, and while we certainly don't depend on that in our program to make it a big-time experience, yeah, it's certainly fun to watch our kids, and um, you know I think these these games coming up. Fall Fest is always a big one. Um, that six o'clock kick against Kansas, uh, sorry, excuse me, against Bethany is going to be great. Um, we have a you know we have visitors coming to that game still, yeah. and you know some people that are really important in our program are going to be here for that. So can't can't you know can't wait for that. Can't wait to get back at home in front of everybody, and uh, you know hopefully at the end be singing Father Abraham, you know instead of uh, instead of not doing that. So that's really cool. And no, we only have five this year, three left. Um, and we want to take advantage of every one of those and get out and watch our guys. So, you know, I think it's um, always one of those deals. We always thank our fans after games, but um, I, I do believe our support in this conference is, is unmatched. I don't believe it's even close or even a conversation. And so while we're a program, we want to be based on gratitude. So grateful for that. You know, I know our people will show up. Um, I know we're going to have a plenty of people at Ottawa, just like we always okay. do. I think the last time we were there, we outnumbered their fans. And so, you know, look forward to that. We we're always so thankful for that because it does take a huge commitment from families and supporters and friends of the program to do that. Um, but it certainly does not go unnoticed. So for anybody listening to this on the way up to Ottawa, man, so thankful for you. So thankful for these young men. Um, you know, we're, we're disappointed we weren't able to win Saturday. But, man, I hope there's, there's some consolation knowing that, man, these young men are – and just great young men. They're great people. They're, they, and when we talk about the idea of brotherhood, they're friends first and teammates second. Um, and uh, you can be proud to know that you know, we're going to bounce back and our kids are a resilient group. Um, and I anticipate us giving our best shot at Ottawa. Absolutely. It's a one o'clock kick. Don't forget it. It's not like the six o'clock kicks you had before. And uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be hot like it's been, but hopefully not. Now mm -hmm. the fall is officially here. But it should be a good game between the Threshers at the one and three Ottawa Braves. 
And yeah, you're right. The, the visiting fans there two years ago were like right next to the <laughs> sideline. So it was great, actually. And I mean, especially on that end of the field where you guys walked that extra point, it was added to the emotion of the event. And it was voted by the student population as the game of the year. Yeah. And it was an away game. <laughs> That's what people, you know, you don't think about that being the case. But yep. uh, it, w it was a really good moment and everything. And we do appreciate those of you that do travel and uh, uh you can watch it on the KCAC network. It'll be have Ottawa's announcers. I'll be on the sideline from Thresher Game Day account, putting out video. Um, you know, as I always do on on road games. But uh, couldn't be more excited to hit the road again and on a Saturday afternoon and play college football. Uh, you, you really can't complain with everything we've been through yep. the last couple of years, and uh, it's it's just great to have more. You know, co no capacity limitation yep. and things like that. So. Uh, Again, 1 o'clock kickoff in Ottawa. The Threshers travel up to take on the Braves, and you can watch that on the KCAC Network. Well, that's going to do it for our program this week. We appreciate those of you watching every week, and uh, it doesn't go unnoticed, and we do appreciate everything that you guys do and to support the program and just obviously you know, support the, the players and the and coaches and everyone involved because we, we do this you know, just more importantly for these student athletes to give them the best possible experience ever and the, you know, be, grow into the great people that they can be and meet that potential. So, and I know Coach would agree with that. So um, that's going to do it for our show. I'm Dan Page. That's Coach Harrison. Hey, we'll talk to you next week and roll on.